the recording. Though. Now I have. So hi, welcome everybody to Discussing Tabletop. <laughs> I'm trying to be better about the hitting the record button so I don't have to do edit, video editing as much, if at all. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm trying my best here. I'm silly. Uh, it's August, August 10th. Um, Gen Con's over. Yeah, Gen Con was happening. <laughs> it was a week. It's a week of weird tabletop stuff. I haven't There's been online, things. like, in two weeks, so I don't know what's been happening. Okay, I mean, you missed a lot of the Gen Con-related stuff, which was some good and bad kind of announcements, I kind of feel like. Um, yeah, and my, my quote was, go my, my point was going to be, yeah, I don't know either, I've been moving. Yeah, so uh, we, we can start with some of the, you know, controversy stuff, which we kind of have to put out there and talk oh. about. Yeah, I thought um, the Lightning was talking to me a little bit about it. It sounds kind of... it's rough. There were two things. Which one was he talking to about? Uh, well, let me find the quote Lightning posted. It's up a little bit past mm -hmm. some of the world that I'm chatting. Uh, I'm going to tell there. you. One is related to Hasbro. It's more. the one that it's like all the... like the... Um, it's like, the quote Lightning has, Don't show more than 1% of the book, blur out the pages or we could sue you. Um, so I assume it's like the book preview copyright stuff. That was pretty rough. So yeah, I yeah, think I, heard I think thing that we're talking about. The, de the details are a little sparse, but I did post the video in my chat that was um, nerd immersion talking about this because he didn't put up any of his stuff that was supposed to go live around Gen Con because of this entire thing, and there were some people that got copyright strikes. So it turns right. out, yeah, I did watch that whole video, so. Because, basically, the Hasbro, no, I'm sorry, the D&D, &D, like, people are new people sending out books and stuff. So it's a new group that's sending out books that's doing this kind of, like, you can apply for it. Because apparently, like, years ago, you get stuff early if you're in the program, you know. Then it sort of switched over a couple years ago to, you usually get a little after, you know, which... Eh, you're still getting stuff to, like, you're review. Still free it's... stuff. Yeah. Now it's a new group in charge of it, and they're, like, I guess new at it, and so coming up with guidelines, which are probably reasonable, fair use guidelines, but the thing is, the guidelines actually are, like, complex. Right. It's the, That's the kind of thing, you know, and... But it also sounds like the strikes that were, some people got were because of Hasbro's lawyers. So, basically... Wizards lawyers weren't talking to Hasbro's lawyers, which were causing problems. Not only that, Wizards was having trouble figuring out and nailing down what their guidelines for these pre-release copies and stuff were. And that really mainly applied to the creators, which wouldn't apply to, well, anybody that just bought a book. But then they have their general fair use policy that you have to kind of follow, which is, you know, there's a fair use policy for, mm -hmm. you know, how you use and talk about the book. That's understandable. But they, I feel like they talk about it in an incredibly complex and terrible way that reflects, honestly, the terrible and complex nature of copyright law. I really love yeah. when a company's so, incompetency ruins people's livelihood. So, yeah, I will say, basically what it comes boils down to is that um, Wizards of Hasbro, like, didn't listen to, basically didn't check with Wizards of the Coast about their policies before taking down stuff, you know? Nice. Yeah, I love that. Lo love That's to see it. basically what it boils down to. It's the equivalent of when a company copyright strikes their own, like, video game trailer or movie trailer. Oh, that's always has the music best. in it. I love that. Nintendo's, like, the worst with that. Yeah, like, Nintendo and Ubisoft do it all the time. So, the other thing which isn't necessarily bad because of the way they're really planning on using it in quotations, but it's one of those things that is, we have to pay attention to it, mm. is Hasbro is hiring for Wizards a principal AI engineer. Oh, of course. I, I can post the job list. I'll, I'll link this here. And again, it, it, th there, there have been clarifications and stuff about this. This is more for things like, you know... This is not, like, art or okay. writing AI. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of there, yes. uses for AI. Like, people right now are thinking writing or... Yes. Uh, 
Are that's not what this is supposed to be for mm-hmm. job ones. Is, is that posting in chat or is my it's chat? It's posting in chat. I mean, yeah. Okay, my, my, uh, on, my, on my side, the chat is frozen up, so hey, thanks, thanks. Oh, there it goes. Thanks, Twitch. Um, again, that's one of those things, so it's not like I'm, like, you know, screaming bloody murder about this, but this is one of those things, it's like, you know, we have to still be vigilant for companies, especially ones that use a lot of art, and I know Wizards has had a bad track record, with a lot of things, basically because they don't pay attention. And this could be because okay. they're not given I enough wouldn't... people. And I'm not saying it's just about AI. I'm saying about, like, there have been, like, art assets. Like, I, I didn't even realize I... in, in something there was... Oh, no, no. It was... Uh, oh, sorry to interrupt you here. But um, someone pointed out in the D&D movie poster, there was... One of the pictures in the background was actually something that uh, was Pizor. Yeah. Which like, is something... It's just not giving... They don't give their people enough time. They don't give enough people time, and whoever they're hiring on, they don't watch after them enough. And this could be they don't have enough people, yeah. you know, to do that kind of thing. That, there, there's a lot of, like, mis- mismanagement mm-hmm. in there that's a problem, and it's resulting in this thing. So, yes, we don't have confidence in them, but this is not necessarily yeah, a bad I, thing, and I wanted to talk about it because, yes, there's a lot of uses for AI. Yeah, I have my things. opinion there's on this. One, I'll let you go first. I kind of want to, yeah, I kind of want to say one other thing, and that is that there's also the fact that they uh, w- uh, they hire out a w- they they basically um, hire out a lot of artists and yes. there are some people who are bad. There yes. are some people who try and cut corners. There and are bad actors so, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. The bad actors so, everywhere. And and the thing is, when you hire out quality a lot, control, but sometimes that's yeah. hard to dodge when especially because when catch. when a lot of the AI art being put into sometimes into wizard books, sometimes into magic arts, and D and D movie posts or all that stuff, it was new tech. There wasn't detection tools for it. The detection tools still kind of suck for it, but yep, they're getting slowly better. My whole opinion on this is um, because it does mention asset creation. If they are using uh, like a, they're training it on things that are ethically sourced or things they own, they're fine with it. They're doing it the way other companies do, which is just theft. Not cool with it. That specific part, using it for game development, could help people out. Like, it's a useful tool. It just often is used in an unethical way. Again. Yeah, because we just don't have laws for it, and yeah. everyone's taking not, advantage of it. Because the regulations the, aren't there yet. The, this entire week, I saw talking about this, and then I saw some updates about this, which was like, it's not as bad as it sounds like off the top of its head was the kind of update, you know, with where they really want to use it. But again, they don't really say a lot of that stuff in a job posting, because it's a job No, it's a job posting. You know, so you you can't really explain that kind of thing, and it doesn't look good when you've had problems with it, you know. They could have announcements about this rather than just putting a job posting out and talk about it with, because there has been bad press. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the thing is, they don't be very bad at press. Just oh, Hasbro, uh, Hasbro is okay. really bad at talking. I, okay, I just want to go on a slight tangent, <laughs> uh, AI tangent, since they ran into this. So I've been looking for, um, as weird as it sounds, one thing I thought would be kind of interesting was to get for my apartment was to get a, my new apartment was to get a shower curtain that had a dragon on it. I ended up deciding not to in the long run for different reasons, but. When I was doing that, I'm like, oh, cool. They actually have a lot. I remember looking for dragon stuff before, and they had so few. And I started to look closer, and I'm just like, wait a second. That dragon has an extra finger. That dragon has. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. That's why, like, it's being so. That's why there's so many options, is because people people just AI arting and just printing it on things. And it's just like. That's a real problem. Okay. Yeah, and the problem is, is I notice it and it bothered mm-hmm. me, so I wouldn't want it anyway. Like, legitimately, there needs to be more regulation in place, but the government is this slow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also say I'm not wholly against AI because... No, I'm not. Uh, this is a little side tangent. Paradox Interactive for the Solar- Solaris uh, expansion. Let me grab the name of it because I... the name is blanking on me. But it's important I get the name of the expansion correct. It matters for context. Uh, Machine Age expansion uses some AI generated things. It uses AI generated voice. How Paradox did it is they were upfront. They told the voice actor for this specific crisis character, "Hey, we want to build a voice bank with your voice for this character. We will pay you the standard fee every time we generate a voice line 
using the voice bay. That is how it should be done. Yeah, or, yeah. or just, just basically upfront deals. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. if it's like, even if it's like, we'll pay you one upfront fee, and that's what we're going to be using it for. That should also yeah. be fine if the person agrees. Yeah, it's like, we'll pay you this much extra for this kind of stuff for this use. You know? are, uh, effectively, when, especially with voice acting, you are licensing the likeness of a person to use. Yeah. And I think that so will you should pay them for that. Yeah. And, and companies will definitely want to go the one-time fee route because that'll be better for them, yes. but... But also then figuring like, out those prices. Is... There's gonna yeah, but then there's gonna be basically a balance that's gonna end up being struck where people won't do it. But then you know, so it's like until and then they'll so it, it will go back and forth. We just need the laws there to make it so you can't just steal. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. And again, we're 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 really talking about like when we talk about this, we're talking about two major facets of AI use. And there's a lot more of it, you know, the writing aspect and the art aspect, or just two aspects of it. There's so many aspects. There's, aspects. there's so many aspects that it can yeah. actually have very good uses for it. And, you know, there's a lot of, like, yeah. various, like, various computational-based things that, you know, like, yeah. and things like that. Like, in I, science and stuff that AI... Many has. medical can... breakthroughs. There's an AI detection tool in the works for breast cancer. Yeah, I can actually give some insight into this because I uh, I got a certificate in data analytics and literally the number one use of AI and the reason we learned about it in that class is to collect and analyze data to because it's just like, honestly, if you can have automated systems and have things in the background doing things, it's honestly the best way to handle it. Should be a tool yeah. to make our lives easier, not a tool to steal our creative jobs. Yeah. yeah. So, like, the idea of an AI director, and, and that AI works very similarly to the art AI, which is why an AI director makes sense. <laughs> it's one of those things that's sort of like, I don't necessarily argue about something like is, like, it, something like tools for artists that are based around AI that are more for, like, touch-ups and certain types of things, especially for, like, digital-type art. But mm -hmm. that it's sort of like an argument about how much is actually being used by the AI. But if it's basically based on the person who's making the art in the first place and it's, and it's affecting those, it, it, there's arguments for it. But I can understand yeah. that being like a tool for art. It, 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 it. We're getting into a side track yeah. here. Anyway, mm -hmm. these are the two things that are like weird controversies in the D&D world. The one is right. just mis horrible mis yeah. miscommunication, which is really technically not Wizard's fault-ish. Yeah, It's like... Maybe they didn't communicate as well with Hasbro's lawyers, or Hasbro's lawyers just weren't paying attention or something. Mm. So there was a miscommunication that caused some issues there, but also, like, they are kind of putting down it. And this is the thing that, like, I think in the Nerd Immersion video, it was a good thing is they have been kind of hitting the hammer down on we own D&D to a large degree, which isn't really great because then it kind of stifles a lot of the... Uh, the content which comes out which supports them and causes the community to grow. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it, it's kind of that weird thing where it's all like the bigger company wants to crack down on user content or at least find a way to monetize it and the Wizards of the Ghost is like no, that's that's actually how we grow. <laughs> that's how we actually make more money. Yeah, it's like it's this interesting thing that there's so few actual reviews out there right now on the uh, player's handbook because of this shit that's going on. Yeah. So it's a week later, and it's been out for a week, out in the wild, yeah. hundreds of copies of it, and we know very little. There's a review thing to talk about that it was on yeah. Ian World News that gives some basic information that is good, but I, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. But there's a lot that we can't talk about yet because we might not know and see like these deeper dives into yeah. uh, materials yeah. for a bit now. Because um, we can probably give up. We can probably, like, you know, over the next few weeks, get some information, get some ideas, be able to talk about, you know, what's there. But it is, and again, to be honest, it, it's a new edition. We we've we've really all handled upon this. Seen some people that have, I've yeah. I've seen a number of people that have seen the new book. They are saying this. This is a new edition. Yeah. You know, honestly, it's not compatible. Honestly, it's it's new enough, or it's different enough to where it really should have just been called sixth edition. Yeah. And you could, I, and, and being and saying here are conversion rules. Yes, it's, I, and it's compatible with old adventures. 
I'm going to tell you this here. I think I've talked about this before, but Shadowrun, 4th and 5th edition, are really similar to each other yeah. with some smaller changes, and they are incredibly compatible. It's like two pages to mm -hmm. convert anything yeah. from 4th to 5th edition. It's really nice. Yeah. It's enough changes to be a different edition, because they change like, the way skills work, but still, they're close enough. And I think that's one of those things is, that could have been this here. It really was. Yeah, and I I think they would have been fine with here's a new edition because like I I mostly think looking from a business side I think that they were like okay the branding we have fucking amazing right it's so easily recognizable yeah. you can point at the current logo for D and D I mean like I know what that is I've seen that in Stranger Things or whatever you've seen in the D and D movie shit. I think that's why they didn't make it a full 6th edition, why they didn't call it that, is because they just wanted to keep the branding. The easily recognizable branding. Yeah, I can see that. And, and to a degree, that makes sense, to a large degree. If you Is is the ampersand 5th edition only? The um, no, I but that was just their new... Like, yeah. so, um, I, I think I think that also the thing is, again, when we look at... Can um, I get you a... a they were... They, they, so, all the same. Okay. I, mean, I have a picture I can put there. So... I, I okay. think I've kind of hinted on it a little bit too. It was the OGL debacle that changed right. the direction. This is the this evolution because... of the D and D logo over the years. Yeah. Okay. I think they really just wanted to keep that last one. Yeah. Uh, which I mean, I think they could, like, probably could have anyway. But the thing is, I yeah. think that they, it sounded like pre OGL. They were they when they were working on the initial stuff. It might have gone farther. It might have been more of a six I, edition. I you also know. think that. Um, yeah, it's a new edition, but it still largely looks like 5th edition, mm -hmm. and that'll it's draw awesome. more people in versus yeah. being like, this is a completely new product. Yeah. Because people who've invested in 5th edition are like, well, I don't want to play a new product, because it happens all the time with new editions. It does. Yeah. Why really I don't like really... Why like, I oh. know it's a stupid reason, but it's why I'm not keen on Pathfinder 2e, because I've invested so much knowledge, money, and time into Pathfinder 1st edition... I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to like... switch over. Again, I'm having... Saying, and that's why I'm kind of excited about 2E, because I'm just like, I have put nothing into 1E, and it was oh the, my gosh, it's horrible. With three a lot. I, you see, the thing is, I got trained at a young age, because I was very young mm -hmm. when third... Well, I was a lot younger, but like, I was very young, and into AD&D, and second AD&D, and, and second edition AD&D. &D. I was in that time period. So I had... I encountered both of those as my original jump into D&D. So getting into third edition, where nothing was being printed and we all thought it was dead, brought me into, like, new and new editions and seeing 3.5, yeah. fourth edition, fifth edition, all these uh, kind of other things. It's trained me. I've been trained by this. Up you know, until old man gets you know, trained. Up until university, when I first played Pathfinder in the ripe year of 2012, which predates fifth edition, I think. Um, yes. My only tabletop experience was... Shadowrun and Cyberpunk. And we yeah. only played the old versions because those were the good versions of the game. <laughs> right? Like, Cyberpunk 2020 is the... In, in, up until Cyberpunk Red yeah. was the only good version. And then I forget what edition of Shadowrun. I think it might have been 4th edition. 4th is pretty good. 4th, 5th, and 3rd edition were all pretty good. 1st and 2nd are... They have not aged well. And I would... Sixth edition is it's I think it's yeah fine, it would have been very fourth edition now. yeah um something that I didn't play, I have never never experienced the twenty system didn't play D and D I, I always put the, the the video games but they're relatively different um I, yeah, I, I played Pathfinder for a long time yeah. and then fifth edition and I'm like man I don't want to play fifth edition I Pathfinder <laughs> yeah. and I played fifth edition I'm like pretty good yeah. and now I'm like I don't know if I want. Six five point five or sixty. I have all these fifth edition books. <laughs> yeah, and they're not as compatible as you want. And they're not be. compatible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, thankfully, things like monsters and stuff are pretty yeah. compatible. Um, it's mostly classes, like, I think. Yeah, and subclasses where it's like subclasses, ancestry, you get these different or species. I'm sorry, in that one and backgrounds. A lot of those that need details and stuff like that to fix them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, think... I don't think even the species are that bad. No, they're not oh, that no, they're different because they're basically the um, 
a, a natural evolution of what they did in the multiverse book, where they yeah, started standardizing. Yeah. I, again, I yeah. don't think it's too much difference, but I, it's still it's. I think it's, it's really rather the be... back, the backgrounds and subclasses are. I, I think. What makes I it wish this difficult. was more of a new edition. Like I wish it was full synthesis sixth edition. Because some agreed. of the UA I... ideas were really cool, and then they yep. immediately backpedaled on them because you're like, I don't know if I like this. Well, again, yeah, it was I, the, those I UA like... ideas. Oh. oh yeah, I mean, I was just saying. For example, I liked the idea of like unifying spell classes to be like you know kind of the same way pathfinder did yeah. that would have made things a lot easier uh, the only problem like i had is i thought they needed something different for bard that was it yeah for like I, the only issue i had is bard should have had its own list yeah which is what pathfinder is yeah yeah that's and, why they have a cult yeah and i i like i also really like how they do sorcerer and pathfinder where you can get any of the four spell yeah. lists depending on like your direction you go in which is really cool uh, yeah, you can also do that for some other uh, classes, uh, which I think you can. Yeah. Um, I I, yeah, for which, me, which is... I, I'm just going to call it 5.5 because that's what it is to me. It's basically the move from 3 to 3.5. Yeah. Yep. Except less compatible. Um, for me, it didn't do enough to be different, and I don't want to spend like $50 for a book on I'm something I don't know it. if I will enjoy. Yeah, I'm, I I'm doing it just because I can and because I'm down being the person to show things on this. But I know I've said in your Discord on record that, and I, I will say this here, wait, if you don't want, if you're unsure about like bind books, wait a couple months and then go look at the new SRD. That's yeah. free to do. Yeah. Because they and did. From that, you'll know if you will like it. You will have to wait until after Monster Phantom comes out. Yeah. Because they are plant yeah. here. Not so that's, what, well, that's what lighting and I are going to do. It's, if we can't... it's actually going to be even longer um, because yeah. they're also working on like the updated OGL mm -hmm. um, for it to be fully uh, to be fully released to the public, which mm -hmm. is actually going to be about six months. So yeah. basically, so from book release months. to about six months later. Which I'm um, fine with waiting because I have an active D and D game that's probably going to take the better part of a year. Yep. I'm planning to run two, uh, Pathfinder 2e next as my next uh, yeah, game. Then, so and then from 5e, I'm moving to Path, uh, Pathfinder 1e Adventure Path. And then from that, I might run something else like Fallout or Shadowrun. I don't know. So, yeah. Um... I will say, <laughs> I will say this, uh, this is a lot of things. I will say there's one review of the, the, the player's handbook I did see that didn't really say a lot about the <coughs> book. but just said his opinions on it. It's from the D&D Shorts guy. And his quote was, this might be the only book Wizards has ever made that's worth $30. <laughs> the digital version is thirty dollars. <laughs> he, he, it's basically suggesting if you really want to get it, just get the digital because it's, it's, it's cheaper. Get it on D and D Beyond. Yeah, <laughs> it's thirty bucks. It's DLC. They made DLC. It's it's, it's thirty you know, bucks on D and D Beyond for this one. I'm pretty sure it's not a PDF because I think Wish still doesn't do PDFs. No, well, I'm not sure. That's, they, they really that's one of the only start yeah. doing PDFs. I have a, I have a small hope that now that they're gonna like have the new fifth edition, they might start releasing some of the old stuff um, as PDFs, like they did with four, fourth. Four, that'd be nice. Fourth edition. Well, they they do have PDFs of it. They can make the PDFs of it. You know who got the PDFs of it? Some of those creators. Yeah. They yep. could physically sell these PDFs. They just choose not to, because I think they want to get people in on D and D Beyond, and then well, I mean D and D Beyond's eventually going to go away for their own, what you call it, B BTT. Yeah, been... I presume they'll transfer purchase, or it'll be like merged. They'll probably merge. Well, yeah, it's going to merge. Is rather what I meant. Th yeah, yeah. So, well, so I don't we'll see, see them going. just throwing D and D Beyond. Away. It makes too much fun. Yeah. Anyway. We got. We, we will talk about the player's handbook in a review of it that I was going to post here in a second, though. But first, before that, there is more Dragonlance novels by the. Hey, uh, I like Dragonlance. Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, which I think are the uh, original or one some of those Dragonlance is cool. authors. Um, so they're doing another trilogy of Dragonlance novels that are coming out. It's 2026, so it's miles away. They're working. Makes on sense. It. I mean, there was a new Dritz um, novel that came out not too long ago, as well. Uh, let's hear. Uh, they're writing the books together. Uh, nice. They yeah. ask if the conflict will pre-existing lore uh, established in Richard A. Nax, uh Legend of Puma. They said this is our story. They asked if Hasbro's involved. They said Random House Words, it, Worlds is the publisher. I don't know that. You know. Um, and an omnibus edition of, of this 
I guess, of Chronicles will be accompanied by Amnesty of Legends in 2025. Right. And this is Legacies, I guess. So they have the, like, the series of books that are coming out with Ominous of them. I think we talked about one of them last week um, that's coming out for the Dragonlance. We're getting new Ominous, Omnibuses of the trilogy. So it's, I guess, the first trilogy, second trilogy, the third trilogy. Yeah. If you don't know what an Omnibus is, um, for those of you who don't, like, read a lot of novels, because I know a lot of people don't, don't read big novels or a big series, it's a collection of all the books in one. If you're interested in Dragonlance, we're getting more. It's a great franchise. All right, so yeah, ra- yeah, Random House is owned by Penguin. Yeah, I don't know what that has to do with it. I was like, maybe they—that's just the some... publishing company. I think it's it's saying that they're working through a publishing company and maybe for book related stuff. Yeah, especially um, for like Random House these... World just publishes books. So perhaps while working through them, since they didn't say they're working with Hasbro, they're basically using them as a go between between yeah. them and Hasbro. Um, because it, because I remember years ago there was some issues. Um, Random House World does a lot of the Star Wars books that come out now. So. Okay, I've got the EN World review of the Player's Handbook. I'll put this here. We talked about it. It's the new Player's Handbook. They talk about it a little bit there. This is the fir- this is like one of the few major Player's Handbook reviews I was able to find online that is currently. There are a few yeah. other ones. There are some videos of some random people that have them. But, like, a lot of the major players um, haven't said anything because of the updates about what's going on, you know, that yep. happened. And, all the, all, and all, the, all the miscommunication that apparently was happening. Because, again, up until the embargo was going to end, they were shifting things around with their embargo for releases yeah. and stuff. And, like, when you could do it, which was an issue. So... This confirms here our thoughts that we're talking about, that the person here that wrote this agrees it's a new edition. Um, uh, just as a sidebar here, you can read through all the details that they say about things in here and stuff. Um, they talk about a lot. Again, we'll have to talk about it. Uh, their bottom line on that one. Um, it's well organized. Much better than some of the old, from yeah, a lot of RPG that. books. That's very good. Um, and, you know, it it tries to pretend not to be a new edition, but it really is, kind of thing. I really think they sh- Yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of... They were always going to try and not be, like, PR-wise a new edition, but there's no way around it. It's too different, right? It's, yeah. it's too different. It, again, it's the, yep. they, per- they continue, even in the book, pretend it's not a lot. And I think yeah. that's, like... It might be a detriment in a lot in some of the ways for discussion. Yeah, I mean, one of the things like they that. said, the things that are different section is like, or the changes section is like, uh, as they put it, is uh, annoyingly brief and unhelpful. Yeah, yeah. heartbreakingly right. brief and unhelpful. That's what they said. Yeah. So, um, I think you know. Again, I just wanted to post this one because it's the first one out of these. But I feel like probably either next week or the week after that when we actually get through. What of embargoes, and we hear a lot more about this because you know we hear things about the paladin, and the ranger, and the monk, and all those things, and the actual like seeing the changes that are there too would be very good. I mean, like it's sort of like uh, is the ranger? I think like I've heard like people talk about like the ranger. It's better, but it's still not great or something. You know, it's like the what problem does that mean? with ranger is we hit peak ranger with Tasha's, and anything else <laughs> is just going to be a downgrade. Yeah. And it's not, it's not quite Tasha's Ranger. It's like steps yeah. in that direction, but it's not quite there. And, and from what I heard, they shifted a little bit more fightery. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit more yeah. blast, or, or like combat yeah. focused. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot more situational bonuses that we find in this book, too. I think that's what's a part of the discussion I've been hearing, that it, it's they've been bringing in a lot more situational bonuses, which isn't necessarily bad. But it has to be a thing that the situational bonus isn't, like, very specific situations. It's types of situations. And I don't know if all the things they brought in are that, it sounds like. You know, it's sort of like giving the rogue the option of subtracting dice to do things. Those abilities can be helpful in certain circumstances. But, you know, I think what the, some of the discussion is, is until we see enough changes within the monsters, it's still... Yeah, monster has they, to have HP go down. Have go they down. 
shown any monsters off really? Yes. Okay, they At have. Gen Con, they showed off a number of them. Uh, okay. We talked about it last week. I'll have to look for an article on that. Or you could, you uh, could send me one. I'd appreciate it. Uh, I think they, if you go to I, the... I, uh, they, Ian will have a bunch of them last okay. week. Uh, I've Dragon, heard Skeleton, my, so. my big concern with some one of the changes, <laughs> not to bring up Paladin again, because I rant enough about that. Uh, when they when they made smites into spells, my big concern was, well, there are creatures that are immune to spells below a certain level. <laughs> Is that ability yes. gone? How did they change? Well, otherwise, a paladin yes. can't smite certain things. Yes. There, there, again, that's one of those things that there are concerns about that yeah. with that change, that if they reflect that change in certain places, it's not bad. You know, it's not necessarily a terrible uh, change bringing Paladin down to balance with everything else isn't a bad idea. Oh, I, I mean, I don't disagree. Paladin is the highest damage output in class in 5th edition in his terms. Yeah, so find, finding that balance is good. I, I think I kind of put my... I, I was very um, suspicious of the well, I mean, I'll be, I'll, I'll be playing a Paladin in an upcoming game, and I've told Lightning is running it. Yeah, only let me smite once per round. That's a good change that they did. Yeah, so... <sighs> yep. We'll know more. Yeah. That's the that's one of the first links. I just wanted to throw that out here. Yeah, come like uh, September something rather, I will be able to uh, actually show one off. Nice. Yeah. It. I will also have a book of shots in September that is not an official book. It's a third party book. <laughs> it should be arriving in September. So we talked about this back when we heard about the awards at Gen Con, which I again. I think I've heard of this and forgot all about its existence, because that's the way I am. We yeah. got the Emmy Award winners. Yay! Um, so, I'm I just linking this here. It, you probably go to their website also, um, but I just saw the one here. Which oh, any. For a second I thought you said Emmy. I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> this, this, this is like probably a very simplified version of it, and there might be more details yeah. on their website, which I linked previously. Yeah, you know that website. There's a lot of really good stuff submitted for these awards. Yeah. Uh, here's the website. Also, boop, boop, boop. so those are both of them. The article, again, you know, is it, 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 it better? Um, but you can check out, uh, there should be the 24 winners and nominees. Yeah, okay, so that's also, it's pretty much the same thing as in there. Okay, so yeah. that should be on the website too. Um, yeah. Publisher of the Year was Freely. Well, Freely Makes sense. They made stuff. a lot of good stuff this year. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they also so. won best cartography, which honestly we haven't seen the Dragon's Bane book. Yeah. Like art, like map thing they have in the back. Oh my gosh, it's, it's really real good. good. Yeah. Sorry, it's, I I like maps so far too much, so I'm like, ooh, best cartography. Who won? Although Alien RPG is it won. Uh, Alien RPG silver. won something. I don't remember what it won. Yeah. Best cartography silver. Sure. Alien RPG has a lot of good maps in it. Hold a silver winner. Uh, I can see. Was it? Yeah, Free League was the gold winner. Okay, so I don't know the silver winner on that one either. Uh, for Publisher of the Year. Uh, product of the Year with the Shadow Dark RPG and Outguns was the secondary one. Um, you know, there's the best stuff in there. Uh, best, hey, best settings Lost Pathfinder, Lost Omens, TN uh, Z World Guide. Oh, that was a good book. Really I've, heard, I've heard really good books I'm about really it. I've heard that. really oh, I, I've best, heard really good things about it. Best yeah. rules, player core one silver. Shadow Dark RPG. Shadow Dark is the hot the new hotness right now. Yeah. I haven't heard oh, I've heard of it, but okay. I haven't heard a lot about it other than like it exists kind of unfortunately. Yeah. So. People love it. Mm -hmm. I'll have to take take a look. Um yeah. Um, see if there's anything else to um, scream out here. Um, yeah, product of the that's... year, Shadow Dark. Yeah, Shadow Dark, Dark sweet. Shadow Dark got a lot of awards here. It, it, I can understand it's the big, it's the big, you know. People love uh, it. It's real good. Yeah. So um, you can check out the gold and silver winners and stuff like that, and uh, you know, judge the spotlights and all that kind of stuff if you want on their site. But, you know, congratulations to all the winners. We had some, you know, good stuff come out this year. So, yeah. I will say, I'm going to shout out one that's on the sword that you may have heard of. It's called Eat the Reich. Um, it is a tabletop, tabletop RPG where you play vampires, and the sole goal of the game is to drink all of Hitler's blood. It's real good. 
I, I did see that was on it's here. I was wondering what good, that was it's about. It's a very good TTRPG. Thank you. It's very silly. Alright, um... I kind of put this in here to basically, like, if anybody had anything uh, to talk about, uh, a section where we talk about some Gen Con hot highlights. I got some information from a couple of the sources. Um, like, I got some about Renegade, um, WizKids, Paizo, Dice Geeks. I was able to find some articles about these various companies uh, that are putting out some stuff. Um, let's see here, and, oh, uh, Bandai, too, because they're d talking about their Union Arena, Arena TCG, mm. uh, which, uh, they're doing anime IPs like Bleach, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Hunter x Hunter, and they've recently announced Code Geass and Demon Slayer for their game, so it's, I guess yeah. it's a combined universe anime game. Um, yeah, it's, um, I've heard, I've heard, like, it's pretty fun from some of my Japanese friends. Cool. Again, I don't know a lot about it. I've heard of Union Arena by name, but I haven't heard a lot about it because I don't really look into a lot of other TCGs really as much anymore. It's, it's like, it's definitely not in the um, top market share. Yeah. It's very niche. Okay. Um, other things like uh, it's Renegade got shut in. Okay, let me just take a look at their talking around. They showed off a bunch of their games and stuff like that. I don't know if they had any major uh, announcements. Let's see. Oh, uh, WizKids. Um, they're doing a another D and D Icons of the Realm 50th Anniversary booster sets. They do the miniature little boosters and hero click stuff. Um. And they're also doing uh, Pathfinder Battles, Armies of the Dead, uh, some miniatures too. And they were sh showing off their Star Trek Into the Unknown at the booth. So, WizKids is doing what they do, a lot of licensed stuff, a lot of miniatures, a couple of board games and stuff. Paizo, I think we talked about most of what they were showing off. They had, again, like, uh, the new, um, I think we talked about it last week. We got most of the uh, announcements for Paizo from Gen Con. It's the new um, the Starfinder playtest is out. Starfinder 2E. And some of the new sets and books and stuff that's coming out in the upcoming year they talked about. And then um, I think that's most of the stuff. There's probably a lot of little stuff for Gen Con, but um I kind of want to just chat a little bit about some of the big things I heard about that's beyond D&D &D and stuff. We did get more... Oh, I did forget one that I do want to mention. But, but I didn't really want to talk a lot about it because until it comes out, we're not going to know more. But the uh, new Magic... Um, what's it called? Set that's coming out. The beginner one. They got they released more details on that one, which is the um, foundations. So we need to get more details on foundations. Just to note that. It made me think. I'm actually curious as to how that like cheap ass Bloombro crap pack is going. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. How how is that thing going that they released that they talked about? Who's Bloomberg, right? The, um... I'm sure it was. I have to look it up with the things. Bloomberg, Magic Gathering, I need to do a wiki site for types of, uh, stuff. Um, sorry. I'm getting distracted by talk we're talking about the, uh, thing here, and I'm trying to figure out the, um... Uh, Releases. Oh, where are you in there? That's all the story stuff, I think. So, it's not play boosters. It's not the star. Oh, the value boosters! That's what they were called. Oh, value the... boosters. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't heard anyone talk <laughs> since we because they're about terrible. Them. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think like. All care of that vanished instantly. Yeah. Um, it's just a 
genuinely bad value. Why? I don't know why you would buy them. I think someone said if they sold them for like ninety nine cents, they'd be fine for like and or or. But no, I think it was also the mention of like if it had one more card in it, it would be draftable. Yeah, you know, it's one less card than draftable, and so you could do like a uncommon common popper kind of thing if you could draft it with one more card mm -hmm. and it was actually really cheap. It's not draftable. It's not draftable. Uh, anyway. So, that's that. Uh, I had one final major thing I wanted to mention and that was an interesting one because it's yet another yet time of Lego diving into the tabletop world. And this time with Asmo, who... I believe we've talked about has is just becoming independent, you yeah. know, because it's breaking right, away yeah. from em Embracer, right? Yes. Um, yeah. So Embracer kind of exploded. So it's Lego Group and Asmodee are collaborating on a new board game studio called Dotted Games, and their first game is Monkey Palace. So Fair. that's it's like it's Lego Monkey with Lego stuff. So I'm just curious as to what this all means here. If they're creating a board game studio and make more of these, and Lego, what's a Lego board game kind of format? Uh, you know, the board game you build when you play. Yeah, basically. Yeah, right? I mean, I'm guessing. I mean, I think by the picture at the bottom played, of this article. I mean, have anyone, have you, any of you ever played Mousetrap? Oh, gosh, the worst game ever made. Damn yeah, thing but never it's works. like that. Oh, it always worked for me. The thing for me is we never played the board game. We just set it up and then like ran it. Uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, um, but honestly, I, I presume it could be something like that, where it's like, okay, you have a thing and you build it according to rules. I'm, you know? I'm gonna tell you, I, I never played Mousetrap. I knew some people where the, it would sometimes work and sometimes it wouldn't work. It's one of those things. So I can see both experiences where like you can get to work oh. every time, and then there's times yep. where it's like it 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 just doesn't want to work. You know, it's yeah, it, it, it always worked for me. A lot so. of when it has a lot of moving parts, you can get lucky. Unlucky. Mousetrap sat in the board game pile with Monopoly of games we never wanted to play. <laughs> okay. I understand Monopoly. Hold on. I just want to... I think we played Monopoly one time as a family and it terribly. Can you see it? Uh, is there Mousetrap in there? Yeah. I can't quite see it. <laughs> I have some board it, games up there. Yeah, it's, you uh, can't really see it. <laughs> I mean, like, I can, I can point out on the destroyed pile that the cat sleeps on top of. There's, like, some old board games over there, like Tangling, Scrabble, Sorry, uh, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle one, and I think that's a mad one, which I never played because it was like too adult when my parents got it. So it's just something we have. <laughs> the the magazine, mad. If you're if you're if you're not like if you weren't around if in the nineties, you're 90s, young. You wouldn't you know, know what it is if you're young. It it kind of died by the early two thousands. I think it was still I around. Mean, it's still, I think it's still in print. Oh Jesus. I, I just know. think no one, like, cares about. Oh, yes, sorry. For... It actually went out of print in 2018. <laughs> yes. So... so it's around for a while. I mean, I, it's one of those ones my dad is in print. But she was bad. So... And finally, she was April 20, 2018. Well, you know, it's it's the way of the print business. you got to move to online, unfortunately. Just with a lot of nature of things. Hmm. It sucks. What was it like? Um, there were some other magazines that I heard about that are. are oh, Ga you mean Game Informer, where they also Game just nuked the website immediately and deleted everyone's work? That that's awful. Arthur. So if you want to hear about that, I recommend you listen to um, Drop Frames because they did a really good segment on it. Yeah. So, like nuking the site—that sounds an awful thing. You know, you can mm. just archive that shit. Genuinely, um, I think there are now people talking about how it should genuinely be illegal to delete an art source of information like that off the internet. Where? Wait, what? What? Got so, ga so Game Informer was suddenly closed by GameStop. I, and also uh, and noted, the, Game Informer, um, long-standing video game. One of the map. literal only Informer. good pieces of game media left. Yeah. Uh, yep. Closed by GameStop. The website was shut down. All articles deleted. So the writers cannot find them to put in their portfolio portfolios. They're, they're just gone. Was There's a lot of efforts right now trying to find them and get them back, but it's a really tough going process. Um, yeah. And game, there were several ongoing contracts that might get GameStop sued. 
Because they might be in be breach me. of contract for just shutting the company down. That would not surprise me because that kind of thing, such like just on, on like, the customers, um, like, yeah, we're huge, it down. huge yeah, one. All everything. of the Dragon Age Velgar um, press was through Game Informer via contract. I don't think he is happy. Nope. Yeah, honestly, I hope that they have a way, they have a backup and can restore that mm -hmm. because I feel like they're going to have a lot of issues if they don't. Mm -hmm. A lot of work just got deleted overnight. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you ever delete something as a company? That's just GameStop the dumbest like, thing. It's GameStop just the worst. GameStop is just, GameStop. Is just the worst. It's GameStop. I can just say Did it's I... GameStop, and that's a perfect excuse yeah. for the idiocy of it. It's GameStop. They do a lot of. They've over the years done a GameStop lot of bad choices. Probably one of the worst companies. Yeah, I always hated GameStop. Uh, there's the other one. There was like two. There was GameStop, and then there was like Game. No, what was it? What was the other one called? The thing is, I'm so glad I. I, I like the I, other for, one, but that one got. That there one got was there was a stuff. period of time in, in much when I was much younger that I considered working at a GameStop because there was some nearby. I think I even applied for one, but I didn't really push on it very much, so we didn't really get anything from it. But I have heard from so many different sources, whether from people I've known, friends and associates, or online, horror stories from GameStop are infamous, and there's a million of I, them. Um... I have a lot of friends who've worked at GameStop, and I've never heard a good experience. Yeah. Yeah, I... I, I uh, oh, gosh. I have a fun story where it's all like, I pre-ordered something, and, like, my mom basically wanted to wait, like, a week for my report card to come in to, for good grades. And I got good grades, so it was fine. And I went in. It's like, they didn't even save it for five Not, days. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's the type of shit and they didn't. Do. Yeah. And so, like, they sold my copy, my, like, limited edition oh, yeah. copy that I paid for, and I don't think I got any money back for I it. I remember the last time I pre Which I don't think is legal. The last time no. I pre a game was, was Mass Effect 3, which was 2012. Uh, if you want to feel old chat. Uh, that was a long time ago. I pre from GameStop because I wanted the little robot dog that came with the GameStop pre-order. I didn't get that in my pre-order. I was pissed. So... Yep. I must confess, I think I think I can think of my last pre-order, and it's not a good one. What was your last pre-order, Campus? Resident Evil Six. <laughs> you know, I can't judge yeah. you because I have friends who did that. I look, it was Resident Evil game, and I really played the shit out of Resident Evil Five. And you know, with all its controversies and, and problems, Resident Evil Five was still very fun, and I played so much of it with Blaze. We played oh, through mercenaries played together. So we played through all the difficulties together. We were, like, getting all the unlocks. You know, we did a lot. We played through it, like, a couple dozen times, probably. You know. I remember uh, trying to... my experience so. with Resident Evil 6. And this is super side tangent, but we don't have a lot of it. Uh, my search for Resident Evil 6 was we got... Me and a friend, we bought it. To, we were like, we're going to play this here. So we loved Resident Evil 5. We got to halfway in the Christmas campaign, and we both returned our copies of the game to GameStop. It was late enough in time that I basically got the game and I was still playing another game and trying to finish it up so I didn't have a chance to play it right away and then I basically was like okay I can see someone play through like the first thing and I don't mind that I started watching it and I I just owned the game and I've never actually played it I by physical copy also my really PS3 shouldn't. was acting up <laughs> you really like your life is actively better for having not played it <laughs> But I will say you did you did miss experiencing in in whatever year that came out, uh, the really cool character of Leon at the end of the campaign just going, women. I think I do own it on Steam now because I got I, like one you, of those. I remember we talked about this after Resident Evil Five. I think you were like, "Do you want to do six? And I just said, "No." <laughs> yeah, I think I think I do own it because I got like one of those like bundles on sale which was like a billion Resident Evil games but yeah there is not you have to pay me to buy Resident Evil you have to somewhere, buy it for me somewhere I have like it's like I think it's was it it's one one of the Resident Evils I have like a I metal tin yeah I think I got it in a sale you might, well. I have the I have five in a metal tin I might I, I might have, have five, five. I might have that too Resident Evil 6 is a bad game Resident Evil 6 was so bad I didn't buy Resident Evil 7 for a very long time no, and that's the thing is like I heard so many bad things about Resident Evil Six that I didn't even like think about buying Resident Evil. I think 7. the thing is, I think the thing is having listened yet, to and watched yeah. it, like playthroughs of it nowadays. 
I think there are aspects of six which are very which are good. There's four but... mediocre games put into one package. Yeah, and I think that's the issue. Is like, and so, and they're not all made equally. Like Leon's campaign is very Resident Evil Four coded, you know, or Resident Evil Five yeah. coded. Maybe it's the best way to say. It. And I think you can be fine with just the Leon's campaign. So it, the story's batshit. Like, even batshit by Resident Evil standards. And ridiculous by Resident Evil standards. And then, like, you know, the Sherry and Jake one is a little silly. See, and there's some problems one. with it. But well, I think I, I it, did see that one when I, saw one, when I watched one play and I'm like, man, I'm glad I didn't play this. I think it's fine also. And then the Ada one, you can just play it on your own, basically. So it's, it's, it's a the single funniest thing about the Ada one, the Ada one has co-op, but you just play like a a, a Unity store asset of a man who has yeah. no animations for anything. But I think it's sort of like it's the Chris and what's his face uh, Pierce Chris, Chris and Pierce campaign, which God. is just the worst because it's a it is a it's a it's a third person shooter. It's Gears of War but done horribly. It's ba- yeah, it's worse. I mean, I'd rather just play Gears of War. Yeah, it's worse Gears of War. <laughs> if Gears of War ever comes on to PC, I will make my friends play with me. Mm. I never had interest in that. I'll buy I, think I, I love Gears of War. <laughs> I, like Gears of War is like uh, people are like, oh, Halo is the best Microsoft franchise. No, it's Gears of War for me. I Gears of War is better beat, than Halo. I never beat Gears of War three, but like I totally played the hell out of one and two. Oh my god, two is like my favorite Xbox game. I guess I think yeah. that's the thing is like I'm, I'm well, like, mostly I'm... because I moved and didn't really have or moved went to college and didn't really have access to like my Xboxes readily. So I, um, I never finished it. Very much did the achievement where you had to kill ten thousand locusts. Um, I did that for all of them, uh... except for uh, Judgment, which was really bad. So yeah. Um... Magazines are good. We we don't really have them anymore. I mean, even like yeah. online versions of them would still be good, but we just don't. I, I still it's... have a pile of Game Informers somewhere in my house. <sighs> it was one of those things I actually have to talk about again anyway, because like, at least they linked a bunch of news sites, but um, the last, other than Ian World now, which I've been using, Tabletop Gaming News I was using for a long time. I was using that one. Dice Breakers is gone. Tabletop Gaming News has like, they released a statement that they're like, hey, um, we're going to try to keep going, but it's just like, the person that's now like in charge of it is the only one there, because nice. like it's like all like it went around and then a group of people bought it. You know, it was going in between companies owning it, and now this one person that's been like one of the was one of the co-owners is the only owner and like a person now because everybody has like a, like either like sold it for cheap or something. That like, sucks. So sort of like and so we linked like a bunch of places in the end world that are like here's a bunch of other sites. So I, I'm gonna try to use some of those other news sites. They link and still I'll still stop by. Tabletop Gaming News, because that was the, the first news site I went to when when starting like looking into news for like this year. That was the first one I found for like for sources of stories and stuff that we can talk about and kind of break down our own opinions on. Yeah. Um so, you know, it's just an unfortunate thing that, you know, it's hard to find and, and these sites are like so a lot so a lot of them are mixed bags that they have to like do more than just tabletop. It's hard to find these just tabletop news sites now. Like when you got these like big cultural yeah. ones, kind of like um like more things like IGN and that's trying to do now, so like that's where you have to kind of go, unfortunately. Yeah, hopefully Dice Breakers gets back up again because technically they have posted one thing since, or like, yeah, one thing since their previous shutdown, like one article. Yeah, I mean, again, it's I think it's going to depend on what IGN uh, decides. Does that they them, yeah. yeah, are they going to just yeah, but make keep it their own thing, they merge them? Yeah, they literally stopped all articles, and then there's there was one posted in June, <laughs> yeah. which is more like a how to do a thing rather than like it's like how to play this game. It's like okay, okay. Uh, for for online people, here's a little thing for this week uh, that I just when we're talking about this, I thought of um, Momo. Your suggestion for more two factor authentication and stuff yes. like that. I I thought I had it for certain things, and apparently at least Twitch got reset. Yeah, and I didn't realize that from some update somewhere along the way, and it was it, it was switched over to like just the one mm-hmm. that's bad. Also, <laughs> I, also, I went also I went to look, and I had apparently had switched it over to the app, so I'm actually yeah. good. So like yeah. genuinely, if you even if you're just a casual Twitch user, um, or on any website, have two factor. 
if you can, use an authenticator because all it takes is a person to get one account from you and then they can get everything else from you. Yeah. That's all it takes is one account to be breached. Yep. So, and, and the two you mentioned, Authy and... Authy uh, and Google Authenticator are the two best. I will be transparent. Authy did get hacked this year, though they only released phone numbers of employees, I believe. Yeah, mine's just called Authenticator. I that should probably see. That's, that's I think prob that's probably that's Google probably Google Authenticator. Because that's okay. that's I, I, that's one of the two. I I split. I personally use Authy. I I use both of them. Um, I, I use have, them for different um, things because I feel like that's also good to like kind of split your. I have your a few friends. friends who are in certain like in the games industry. They are required to use Authy as part of their contract. Yeah. Just because cybersecurity is a very serious thing. I did, I, did a, I did activate a couple more sites that I hadn't had on, and I was like, ah, oh, man, I really shoot for this, you know? Yeah, big uh, thing for you guys would be, make sure your Twitches are secure, because that's your live your it, Twitches it and your YouTubes. My, yeah, it came up to mind because, like, so, like again, it's just someone I followed because they did some, like, Pokemon-related shorts that I thought okay. were really clever things, you know? Because, you know, I've got... I don't think I have 2FA on my YouTube. <laughs> Probably should. You know, and it was just <laughs> one of those things, like, I'll give you a follow, you put out, like, a short for once in a while that's an interesting, like... A discussion point on like the Pokemon world because I like playing Pokemon Go and learning about some of this stuff occasionally. You know, it's like you run and, and again like you know with you um, want tips on how to be more secure hacked. in your mm -hmm. online browsing. I do implore you to follow Pirate Software on YouTube or his Twitch because he is a offensive security specialist. I'm sure you've seen his shorts; they pop up everywhere. Yeah, I've seen some Pirate Shop. Um, he gives very good advice on how not to have your data breached and how. Truthfully, your data has probably already been breached, um, but a lot oh, of yeah. data getting breached doesn't matter. Yeah. Just when they get the very specific things that do matter that you should protect, like your bank information or your phone numbers and shit. Yeah. There's our, like, thing on this, because we've been discussing that kind hey, of thing. Hey, PSA, make sure you're secure online, because you can lose a lot of stuff that way. Yeah, I'm just a... Uh... And don't click random links that people send you. Oh, God. There's those, those show, like... How most virus, that's how most people get viruses in their computer. They just click a random link. There's so many like just like random links that you get like from an email or from a text message, and I'm like, yep. why are you here? Never a text click message? a link in a text My message. My 85 year old boss mm -hmm. and his wife. Jeez, the number of times I have to help them with junk like that. Yep. Never, <laughs> if you if you get a text and has a link, never click that link. Yeah. Sometimes I get like weird texts and I'm like, who is this and why are you texting me? So if <laughs> I, I get a text from a number I don't recognize, I uh, delete it immediately. And I literally I, I had to I, stop my boss from signing into something with his Microsoft account because oh, he's all like, no. uh, throw a random thing. I'm like, no, 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 no. He's like, huh, normally it logs me in automatically. Uh, do you know mm. what, what, what's going on? Uh, he's like, he's like uh, do you know where I can find my Microsoft password? Because normally it logs me in automatically. I'm like, uh, Old something's man, not right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, this is a good PSA. We're 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 very online people. We're hanging yeah. out here. You know, it's these are important things to talk about. So. Um, yeah, probably the reason I never enabled it is because I have no idea how to find it. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, 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 I do oh, not know where it is on YouTube. YouTube, you have to secure your Gmail. Oh, yeah, oh, it's I have, Gmail. I, yeah, you're good, then. Yeah, okay. If you have two-factor Gmail, that is your YouTube. Because yeah. they're the same account. <laughs> yeah, they've merged yeah. all that shit once. Like, I know, because I technically account. have two accounts, though I normally use just the one. Because I'm usually logged into my one that's my also my YouTube channel. But my phone has a different one, uh, which I was the one I had. I have four usually. YouTube channels because I have four different Gmail accounts for various things that I need them for. I got two. Ah. Like I, I've one on my phone, and I try to make sure it's the same kind of sites and stuff. My, my personal email, my business email, my burner email, and then a, a, a work email from a long time ago that I still use because they just let me keep it. That's mm. smart. Um. All right. I think we got through the main topics today. Is there anything else we needed no, to I don't chat think so. about? Um. I think we could give a great deeper discussion topic just because I didn't know if we would run into any more stuff related to Gen Con and stuff. Mm -hmm. if, any, if anybody else had found anything or heard anything. But it sounds like the two of you have been very busy. So you were in the same thing. Yeah, same. I haven't. I like 
haven't done more than scroll Twitter for a couple seconds the last two weeks. Mm. Yes, it's it's not not an incredible amount of terrible stuff, but it has been like you know, again Gen Con, a lot of news. I don't know if we'll get much more. I think we got most of the major stuff out of Gen Con at this point in time. If there's a couple small uh, articles or stuff that comes up, we'll talk about it. But again, it's like big things are stuff related to the uh, D and D and to um, ISO and stuff like that. So. Anyway, um, okay, let's see. Why, why let's, talk, let's talk about our week, in, our, our week in gaming then, and then we can kind of um, see if there's anything else we want to chat about. Um, but if I can figure out if there's a there's a good deep discussion topic to chat about. True. So, anybody do any? Well, okay, I guess we can start with anybody do anything last Saturday. Saturday? No, I don't do anything on Saturdays. Well, Worm and I had Joe's game on Sunday. I was there for that. That you were through. Oh my god! I, I have this to thing is... leave that game after the next session, though. So yeah, life be compli- life be hectic right now. And the thing is, yep. it's like I'm curious as to long, how long Joe wants to go, though, because we've definitely like I don't know how long he wants. I to thought go. that was a fun session. I think it was a good I session thought, too. I thought it was a good session too. I thought it was a series of very fun fights, and by series I mean we like one big fun fight that had environmental stuff in it. Yep. I think I think our entire battle against the like we, we, our, our our tormenting of the Salad was hilarious. That poor guy. I loved that. I, I <laughs> loved the Salad. That poor man. We tormented that Salad so much. It was, it was quite so, so just to clarify, basically there was some terrain hazards in the thing we had. And so I cast grease on the, right near the like only path the salon could go. <laughs> it's that or, 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 or face the, the hazards, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's basically either take damage or face hazards. And, and like, it kept trying to do things, but every time it stepped on the grease, it fell. Uh, and so, like, it finally just took, like, two turns to crawl to, like, the ladder so it could get up to the next level and then move around and jump down onto us. <laughs> It was it was a very silly kind of thing. And then, but the before cast. it could even get there, it got webbed in a web spell that I did cast. use the power of the uh, wand of some webs. Honestly, why. it really it was a really good like tactical thing because it basically meant we didn't have to face the heavy hitter until we got rid of a lot of the other people. I'm not gonna lie, I it's that's the best thing that Joe's given me as a character that's very not attack heavy, which. I'm not gonna lie. I I had an opportunity to take an attack spell, and I took something that is not an attack spell for me. I took greater invisibility, so I can put one uh, of our melee people in greater invisible. Because <laughs> I felt like advantage to all their attacks is probably a good thing. <laughs> I'm like, you know what, I can continue. I can continue my shenanigans without taking actual attack spells by making someone else murdery. <laughs> uh so yeah. Um, look, you know, uh, one day maybe I'll take an actual like damage and spell. There's that like it was like Fizzman's has like a psychic lance that actually is pretty neat, and I looked at that for for new level spells. Too. We did level one too. Fun battle. That was pretty much all of it. Was the battle though? It was like a big epic kind of um, kerfuffle. Um, and, and I did I did try to negotiate with the people and it didn't work and you know yeah, yeah. And that is one thing is I think the book just wants certain... you to I think the book just wants you to fight them yeah the book also... just wants you to fight them and Joe uh, I don't want to be me to him but he just doesn't like think of op- alternate solutions yeah so I think all, like I think it's we the need thing to fight that, them like, so that's what we need to do is is these like these things don't have. Uh, the the battles built the other options built in and as because he is only working off of I have this set up for this you know week um, out of two weeks you know it means that um, it, it, it I guess that's a easy way of saying like 
he only has so much time to work on it, you know. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and so he basically keeps to a lot of what the book has. So it's like he doesn't have, and he's pro- I don't think he's as quite as like ready for some of the improvisation. Maybe. Depends on what he said to. Anyway. I think it was fine. It was fine. Anyway. Oh! Uh, Monday! R- River ran a game on Monday. Yeah, it's River's game where we fought uh, Jay's character's family, or some of them, and we killed them all. Oh, yes, yeah. Jay's character's family, who was raised. Who's the. The gnome, gnome raised by rats. Yeah, by like hyper intelligent rats. That um, are terrible. Awful creatures, really. But, and they're part of a rat democracy. <laughs> yeah, they're a rat. Dem- they're a rat democracy. Uh, that's not why they're terrible. The terrible part about them is the fact that they take other rats and forcefully ascend them to human intelligence. That's not okay. <laughs> yeah, that's like pretty bad. I didn't say anything about that. I just, I just left that out there. It's like that's the thing that they're doing. Yeah. And then um, we did a dungeon. We found a wolf yeah. man, and we freed. Well, we didn't really free the wolf man. Well, yeah, because then, like you know, and we, 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 you ended up traveling to. Yeah, uh, you tried to come, but I didn't let you. You didn't let me, so then I had to like you know. <laughs> I like kicked you shenanig- off. I kicked you off of me. I had to do shenanigans to follow you because I'm sorry that would do paranormal do. It's like nah, I, I gotta follow <laughs> shenanigans. Uh, you forced shenanigans out of parents. Good. That's fine. Uh, That's what I'm here. Sorry. I'm here to make the game goofy. I need yeah. to clip that. Hmm? <laughs> I tried to come, but you wouldn't let me. Yeah, I had to kick you off of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I, look, I, yeah! I, yeah! We don't discuss yeah. how horny our D&D game is, all right? <laughs> There's, there's a lot of horny games. There's a lot of Perrin games. is the it's only a... not horny character, I feel like. Perrin, Perrin just, it's not a horny character. Also, I'm... I learned last session you had a pseudo-dragon the entire fucking game. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it came up in the first session. I don't know the fuck this guy's existed. And, and I think it, I was has... okay for it. I'm not going to lie, I also forgot about the pseudo-dragon existing a little bit. <laughs> I was sitting there, I'm like, oh yeah, fucking tea leaf, I forgot all about you. <laughs> uh, it was We're one of those things. Do the JRPG thing of, of go kill a god now or something. Yeah, I was, it's gonna come up. You know, uh, fight god with an- the power of anime. Yeah, yeah, the power of friendship. Yeah, I do have that. And this gun I found. <laughs> and we have to murder, like, I don't know. Uh... There's two two elves we have to kill, because they kind of suck. I mean, we have to murder multiple uh, kings too. <laughs> well, that's a, that's I am only murdering one of them. The other's your problem. <laughs> I mean, I've made it our problem. There's multiple go kill regicide. An old old man. That's on you. I have to go kill a tiefling so my <laughs> boyfriend can descend the throne. <laughs> so it was it was interesting adventures. That, that's that's We're one college day. students at that game, by the way. Not all college age, because I'm like I'm like a forty year old half. Uh, my character is ninety eight years old. Yeah, which is a middle aged adult ish for my for my species. Uh, anyway, then we had um, my game, your game, where we did more investigation. There were shenanigans happened. They, they uh, did indeed. You you went to go talk to someone, and then his friend got murdered by a hot lady who was. Plague with madness, and you ripped her eyeball out. And funnily enough, that was actually the solution: uh, was removing the eyeball. And Lynn yeah. figured that out. Yeah, but they didn't say anything about it. So their character no, just so you just think eyeball. You just have the weird image of Lynn just ripped someone's eye out. Yes, and then <laughs> smashed it. Yeah, it was like well, that was a thing that happened. <laughs> uh, and then he got ambushed by a horrible squid man and his uh. two assassin lackeys. Yeah. And you had a standoff with some cat people. Yeah. It was it was a lot of it. Shenanigans really abound. Adventures. Yeah. Also, I think Cell went to go talk to some church leaders, and then like, I don't know if I assume some people got the vibe I'm putting down. You should probably shouldn't trust the church. 
I got the feeling that Trex was probably weak. Probably shouldn't trust them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, there was that like epic duel you had with that assassin that lasted five turns because neither of you could roll well. And he kept saving on uh Toll of the Dead. Yeah, well, I mean like I cast a bunch of spells and many of them didn't work because of rolls. Yeah. Uh Man, the power—the power of lack rolls. That was—that was. There's a lot of bad rolls that session. Yeah, that's fine. I think the session's fine. Um, I enjoy that game. I, we're all apparently everybody but the but our but our Tengu is hot. So yeah, everyone. <laughs> I will. So Cell hasn't revealed this yet, but I think it's pretty clear. So if Cell takes another Warlock level, there will be three characters at the party with pack magic. I'm just like a straight warlock. You're a warlock. Lynn is a blood hunter when she gets pad magic. And Cell is a paladin warlock. There are effectively three warlocks in the party. That's ridiculous. Everyone has a shitload of charisma except for the bird. Uh, and we had Crimson Queen. I did. My game. Um, which I think went pretty well. Uh, you did a lot of adventuring. I do think I want to continue kind of look into figuring out ways to make the exploration a little smoother. Um, I don't think it was bad, but I do think there can be some making it smoother and stuff. I know uh, issue for me is any, and this is partially because of Carrying Crown and how that dungeon, how dungeon that I laid on. When, in my experience, when an undead dungeon is like, oh, there's a bunch of corpses on the floor. My son says, oh, all of those corpses are going to get up and fight us. But that hasn't happened in this dungeon yet. I mean, that's I'm, why I said I've, I, okay. I've been stepping on... <laughs> I, I will say, everything. I removed four encounters because they were just unnecessary battles. One of them was in one of those hallways. Yeah, no, I figured. I 100% figured that there was something there that was supposed to happen that you removed. Yeah, only one of them. Would, it, yeah, it's but... weird that the book would go into so much detail of what kind of skeletons are on the floor. Again, I because the thing is, it's in, it it's it, I have detail on both halls, and it's both and, and it's both of them are kind of like that. And one of them you don't get the encounter, so it's also like okay, it's just one of them randomly has the encounter, the other does, and it was also just like some weird monster that would have just been kind of annoying because it was like a. Um, I think it might have been an actual Incorporeal because it was like a mist monster. Incorporeal just sucked to fight. Yeah, that's why I was like, this is just... There are plenty of other, like, ghostly Incorporeal stuff in this place. I don't need another yeah. one. And it's just... It's it's in a tiny hall, so I felt like it was kind of... We are at least out. of the level where we can deal with it. But uh, yeah, Incorporeal yeah. pushes kind of sucked to fight. I, I, I'm like... And this is mostly just a Pathfinder dungeon. I mean, if you're on the dungeon, just because it's a Pathfinder dungeon. Yeah, and I, I, I'm not the biggest fan of how Paizo makes dungeons. Yeah, I think it, it's they've gotten better. They got better as yeah. it went on. So like these are still very old. Dungeons. These are the old. This is a 3.5 dungeon basically. Yeah, this is very much so 3.5 dungeon too. Um, I also think like I do actually like the like weird little supernatural things that happen. That like the weird little like lore haunts are kind of fun. Yeah, those are fun. That's like a great idea to this entire thing that I'm like so glad that's in here. And I think that's like one of those weird things of like, they're so much better than the normal ones. <laughs> like the lower ones. <laughs> like, you know, you're getting messed with something that like, it doesn't really do anything to you mechanically. So yeah. like, yeah, it's just sort of like there. And Joe will fell every single one of them. Well, it's like, what, like some of them are like, everybody makes a will save and the person with the lowest will save is the one affected. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> It's Joe. <laughs> the barbarian. Uh, it's the poor barbarian. He sort of should have some will. I feel so that. bad because Joe has taken so many feats to boost his will save. <laughs> and he just keeps rolling like a two. It's all well, he's taken so many feats to boost it, and it's still <laughs> two below mine, and I've it's done like, nothing. <laughs> but yeah, but it, it, it's rough. It, it's rough being a marshal for will saves, man. Like even even being like the Blood Ranger, they don't give you goodwill. That's no. just like, they're just like, well, we we didn't give people goodwill. <laughs> uh, 
No goodwill towards barbarians. No, you would do that. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed the game. Uh, I, again, I think just finding a little bit more balance and um, probably... I do have a couple of like side things. Which I don't know if they'll take the entire session or they'll take part of the session or in between when you guys go back. I've got a couple more planned. Uh, kind of like with the... Um, Pokey Boneyard. Uh, Boneyard Adventure, yeah. They might not be as big as Boner, but I've got a couple more plans you know, to, to kind of break up. We are overthrowing the government. Yes, and that might have, and because you guys are, or you folks are probably some of the more powerful characters doing that, it kind of makes sense. They're like, hey, you know, we need your help with this because, you know, you're our elite warriors <laughs> of overthrowing the government. One of you can point at a man and he explodes. We need your help. <laughs> Anything else? Anybody else did any uh, tabletop stuff this week? Uh, no. I'll take that as a we didn't do anything on Thursday or Friday. Oh, actually, anybody Thursday or Friday? Uh, Thursday, no. Friday, I uh, played a Resident Evil randomizer. Ooh. Which is not tabletop related. I, I, I have every day after work, I've spent like two hours doing moving stuff. Yeah, I have been tempted to get back into and just do like a. A little bit of the uh, bio brand original rap randomizer. Lynn and I are doing a race to see if we can do our seeds faster. I've gotten the babiest of seeds, except like there's just a lot of hunters. Uh, mm. Lynn has like four rooms that are full of, of tyrant. They're just full of Mr. X reskinned as Lady D. See, I've been waiting for October to play through it, but I really have been tempted to like put in for the uh, RE4 remake Biorand randomizer that came out there. Because it, it's, it's so good looking. It's sort of like they've taken their style of it and managed to apply it to RE4 re remake. But I haven't played them the base game, so... Hey, the base game is really good. I do have to play that. RE4 remake is probably one of the best remakes. Yeah. Good. Um... I'm looking at my list to see if there's anything quick and easy to talk about. And I, I'm going to be honest, um, maybe we'll call it an easy week this week, just because it's been a lot of crazy weeks for everybody. Um, I do, and we've talked about some other side to topics that have been interesting for that this week, too. Um, you know, just for fun. Uh, I could just call this the side topic week. The side topic week. <laughs> uh... Certainly I mean, if you really want a real side topic, uh, what kind of hat do you think would look good on me? Ooh. <laughs> I'm bad with hats. <laughs> I, think it's rock I am too, hat. which is why. I, I have this. I have this, which doesn't go over my headphones. <laughs> Remember that. Uh, it's also kind of been squished in a little bit, just because I, I leave my headphones on top of this. And I think the, but I've been getting uh, sunburned on the top of my head, so I think I should start wearing a hat when I go for walks. Uh, that might be a good thing if you're going out of time, which can do that. Uh, just a simple cap would be good. I wear one of two hats. I either wear a Pirates baseball hat, or I will wear a flat cap. I, I, for a while, rocked a straw hat, and, or like one of those like straw hat type hats. It wasn't like, like a, it was sort of like more like this style of hat, you know, like the kind of brimmed hat, but it was like a straw one, um, which was really neat. Uh, and I used it while I was, this is, is going to be a weird story, crabbing in the Maryland. Nice. When, when I was, when, um, nice lady that was a very good friend of the family who passed away many years ago at this point in time, I would stay for a week at her place, uh, um, and, uh, she had a dock on the Chesapeake where you could go crabbing, and I spent a lot of hours doing that, you know, back in my, my use, my use. And I, I rocked that hat. And that hat got wrecked, but um, I'm sad about that. You know, the hat I would they... like to get is always sold out, and it makes me sad. Mm. It's um, Ray's burnt out hat that he sells. Oh, yeah. But uh, it's like, every time it goes up, it just sells out immediately. Here's the thing. It's like, it's so hard for me to be like, because, you know, I'm... I, 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 I've gotten into now uh, both watching my normal... like. I, I watch a lot of content creators, yeah. and there are so many VTubers that put out a lot of product, and yeah. I'm like, I'm not, I'm like, I don't know where to go with that kind of thing, because a lot of it I'm not really interested in, 
And it's sort of like a hard thing, and this also kind of goes to other people's products too. So like, I just don't know where to go for looking for products for people. Um, but I YouTubers know... are probably a lot worse than that. They've got a lot of this. Yeah, I know YouTubers are like super monetized. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, like if you can, you can. You know. But uh, I do like yeah because uh, Fred Rich, which is um, Ray's store, Martina's store, I guess. But it's gonna be like. Moving off of Carolina sticker, so if you do want anything off that, you should probably check it out now. Mm. So once they move out of Texas, I believe they're um, changing store format. Okay. Hey, you know, I did. He, I, that's one of those things. Is also like hearing things about that, and like I'm like I heard about that this week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you mentioned that for like, a while. And I'm like I just miss these things so much. For I I about. like know this stuff because I watch Ray in the background when I do stuff. See, like, mm -hmm. I, I usually put on his stream, but then don't pay attention to it if it actually starts the game. I probably do other stuff with other I, um... <laughs> uh... Oh, God, yeah, I... He's, like, the only streamer I, I'm really sub to and watch nowadays. Mm -hmm. Look, you know, it's... Uh... As I've gotten older, I relate more toward to the 32-year-old uh, ex-Minecraft YouTuber. <laughs> I reflected more that I used to be a perpetually on the TV kind of person, and now I'm a perpetually on the internet kind of person. Yeah, perpetually on the Pokemon Go kind of person. Uh, not as perpetually as I used to be. I've gotten a little better, but like, you know, like maybe like once an hour I'll like catch some things around me, and uh, I do go out once a day to like the local park. But that's also usually an excuse where I go to like the bank and the grocery store and any other kind of like maybe like mm. the pharmacy or stuff like that. I just include that in my trips out of the world. So it's like, does anybody need anything from the world? Okay, I'll go do that. You know, it's, it's the excuse too. Um, also gets me out of the house. I just find it really funny on um back you know back to D and D on Joe's game when you were late, you came home and you had to go back out to do the game. That was I talked about this. very funny. So. I, I joined the game because my okay so like I was gonna make I was gonna make dinner and my mom came to me right before I made dinner and was like hey I'm gonna order some stuff uh, can you go pick it up and I'm like okay that's right around Joe's game I might I might I'm enjoying the call while I'm picking up stuff but I should be back in time you know great it's not it's not too bad it should be fine and she's like I'm gonna get like a couple of appetizers at like this uh, the Italian place and a Sicilian pizza that's going to be half like st toppings and half cheese okay. Because I wasn't going to eat the topping stuff. It was toppings I didn't like. She's like, I'll okay. get half cheese so you can have it, you know, with the appetizers. I would be just fine with the appetizers. I got, like, a nice bruschetta as my appetizer. It was very delicious. You know, I was enjoying it when I got back to play Joe's game. And my mom talked to me, like, hey, I, I talked to them about not... Because, okay, the pizza was all stuff. It wasn't half. Uh -huh. So she talked to them, and they made us a cheese one. And so then I had to no, go pick up the cheese one. Yeah. It's understandable. And now I've been suffering through because I do. I'm fine with Sicilian pizza. It's not my favorite by far, and I've had a lot of it that I've been working through the entire week. Pizza is a, like a it. week long meal when you can get one. Yes, it is so much of it. I've had so many meals of Sicilian pizza. It's like I would have been done a normal pizza incredibly quickly. <laughs> uh, still a little bit left in the fridge. Gotta eat it, you know. I don't want that go to waste. But that was that was my adventures on on being, being kind of late in Joe's game. And then I think I was a little late for yours game because I I went out a little later because originally we were going to start yeah, at seven uh, and then everybody think, showed up. I think next week we're going to start it. I'm just going to move the start time to seven because that works better for some people. I mean, like it's it's fine. It's fine. I could have I could have still worked at six thirty. As I said, most of the time I'm fine with six thirty. It's just like I I actually just went out to the like go to the store a little later than mm -hmm. I normally would have. And, like, when I heard about this, I was arriving at the supermarket to, like, shop for a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so I'm like, well, this is going to be inconvenient for me to get back in time. Uh, fun things. All right. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it there. That was fun. It was fun. I, was, I enjoyed the time. We talked about some interesting things. We got, we got some side topics in. Um, I hope everybody that managed to get to Gen Con had a great time. If you didn't go to Gen Con, I hope you enjoyed hearing about things there. Um, if you are looking into uh, the player sample stuff, hey, you know, please. Uh, let, let, get to, have, that's a good thing to know. 
whether it's uh, you know my Discord, you know, um, on comments on YouTube, something like that. Let us know what you think if you if you've had a chance to look over the players from the community. Especially, like, I, I'm 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 definitely interested in opinions that you've got, um, on that. One. Um, as we're gonna look into it more and eventually like get some copies or something on itch. I I haven't decided what I'm going to do about the entire thing. Um, that's kind of been a, a nebulous zone in my brain. But, at very least, I'll look over the stuff when they put it out into the Creative Commons for the uh, for the main base groups. So that's what I can say about myself. Um, shout outs. Momo, you have anything to shout out? Yeah, I don't got nothing to shout out this week. Worm, I'm sure you got shout outs usually. At the end. Uh, I'm Diamond Worm. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Diamond Worm or at Diamond Worm on Twitter. Uh, I will probably, the next time I stream will probably be next Saturday. So that's when I'll probably pick back up. Sounds good. When you're um, mo all moved Finally, in and settled in. Uh, moved in and honestly just kind of rested up a bit from moving. <laughs> it's a thing. Like, as someone... Like personally, haven't moved, but I've helped a number of people move. I can reflect how hard it is, is helping people. And they're like, you know, I understand. And I'm like, you know, more power to a lot of you. God, this is, God, I, I can remember. I've had some crazy, like, helping people move adventures, you know. God, I can remember some of them. Those were, those were the good old days. Um, all right, uh, myself, hey, and now Adventure Coven, uh, Remember to check out everything. Give support on all the places. You know, that's always a good thing. Um, so if you're checking us out over on YouTube and you're still around, remember just to do the like, subscribe and all that stuff like that. Uh, hey, I got to shout it out at least once. Um, my social media is linked below. Uh, if you're looking forward to all the other tabletop stuff, I'll have some more this week. And uh, yeah, and that's the basic things. And if you want to see some more gaming that I'll do, I'll play some more Elden Ring this week. I'm definitely, I'm, I'm doing my boss cleanup first before maybe doing the DLC or something like that. I'm figuring out my schedule for what I'm doing, what my plans for that. Is. Slowly but sure. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your weekend, great rest of your Saturday, um, and uh, I mean, we'll probably together as a group see you all next uh, Wednesday for Crimson Queen at 9 p.m. EST. And uh, some of them, some of the new friends here might join me for next Saturday, of course. And uh, I'll see you on Monday. And until the next time we hang out, I'll say goodbye, farewell. Bye.